Hello Year 9, hope you're well. We're going to continue with ratios today. Today we're going to look at using ratios to help us find um, a number that we don't know. So in today's lesson, we will have a ratio and then we'll have another ratio and there'll be one piece missing out of the four things. So your title for today is using ratios. If you could go ahead and start these 10 questions in your book, take as much time as you need, um, pause the video now, and then I'll have the answers for you, all right? All right, here are your answers. Um, the only thing that I think will be kind of tricky is question eight. You don't have to have all four of those answers, but just one of those answers would be absolutely fine. Okay, um, let's get started on using these ratios. So in this example, we're asked to find a number to fill in the box to make the ratios equivalent. Equivalent is just a fancy word for the same. So we need to find a number to put into this box right here so that we can make sure that both of the equivalent or both of the ratios mean the same thing. So what I'm going to first ask myself is how do I get from one to three? And in order for me to get from one to three, I need to multiply by three. So what I'm going to do on the other side is I'm also going to multiply by 3. 5 times 3 is 15, so the answer that we're looking for is 15. All right, next example, same idea. How do you get from 3 to 6? To get from 3 to 6, we can do times by 2. So to get from 7 to our new number, we're also going to times by 2. So the answer we're looking for is 14. This time, the box is on the other side that we're meant to fill in, um, but it's the same idea. So we ask ourselves, how do we get from 9 to 45? And that is times by 5. So we should also multiply the 2 by 5. 2 times 5 is 10. 2 to 9 is equivalent to 10 to 45. Both of those ratios mean the same thing. Similarly, if there's three parts to the ratio, we would do the exact same thing. So we'd ask ourselves, how do we get from 3 to 12? And 3 to 12 is times by 4. So we can times the 2 also by 4. And we can times the 10 also by 4. So we times everything by the exact same number. So we get 8 to 12 to 40. So these two ratios are now equivalent to each other. 2 to 3 to 10 is the same as 8 to 12 to 40. Let's try these in some worded problems. All right, so Dylan's going to do some baking. He's probably been doing some baking during lockdown. I don't know if you have been. I definitely have been. Um, he's going to mix some butter and some flour in the ratio 5 to 8. Dylan's going to use 20 grams of butter. We need to find out how much flour he's going to use. So the two most important things are the butter and the flour, and he does that in the ratio five to eight. Now, see how butter came first in the sentence and flour came second? We need to keep them in that order. And I definitely want you to write out the letters as the first part of the question. So I'm gonna write my ratio by writing butter to flour. So I can use the letters B and F, and then I know they're in the right order, and I know that they're in the ratio five to eight, so I can fill that in, five to eight. In the next part of the sentence, it says Dylan uses 20 grams of butter. So under the letter B, I'm going to write the number 20. The rest of the question says, how much flour does he use? So under the F, that is the answer that we're looking for there. Now, this question looks very similar to the examples we've been doing up until now. It just has one extra line with the letters on it. So I go back and I ask myself, how do I get from 5 to 20? And that's times by 4. So I can also times the other side by 4, and I find out that he uses 32 grams of flour. All right, and that's it. Let's look at another one. In this example, we're going to make some breakfast. Uh, George is going to make some porridge by mixing oats and water in the ratio 1 to 2. How many oats will George need for four cups of water? So let's make sure that we start by finding out what are the two things that he's going to mix together. He's going to mix together oats and water. So oats is the first thing and water is the second thing. So we need to put this in the order O to W. And it says the ratio is one to two. So one part oats, two parts water. In the question, they ask us, how many oats will George need for four cups of water? So under the W, we're going to put the number four. 
and they say, what is going to go in this space here? How many oats will he need? So then we can go and ask ourselves, how do we get from 2 to 4? So to get from 2 to 4, we double that. We multiply by 2. So I also have to multiply the 1 by 2. 1 times by 2 is 2. He must need 2 cups of water, or 2 cups of oats for his 4 cups of water. All right, let's look at another one. So this next question is ever so slightly different, but it reads exactly the same. Rosa prepares the ingredients for some pizza. She uses cheese, toppings, and dough in the ratio 2 to 3 to 5. Rosa uses 70 grams of dough. Work out the number of grams of cheese and the number of grams of toppings that Rosa uses. So we need to choose the first three things, which are cheese, toppings, and dough. So let's write those letters out cheese, toppings, and dough in the ratio 2 to 3 to 5. 2 to 3 to 5. It says Rosa uses 70 grams of dough, so we're going to write the 70 under the letter D, and then we need to ask ourselves, how do you get from 5 to 70? Well, if you're not sure, you can always check by dividing the other way. Because we know we want to multiply by something, we can see what is 70 divided by 5. Because multiplying and dividing are opposites of each other. 70 divided by 5 is 14. So that must mean that 5 times by 14 is 70. So we can do times by, oh, not times by 70. Where am I going with that? Times by 14. So we need to times everything by 14 times the 2 by 14 and we get 28 times the 3 by 14 and we get 42. So she uses 28 grams of cheese and 42 grams of toppings. Um, and that's it. There we go. The question's completely finished. So it doesn't matter if you have two things in your ratio or three things in your ratio or even more than that. You do all the questions the same kind of way. Start with your letters, then write your ratio down, and then find out what you need to multiply by. All right, let's look at one other question. It's going to be a little bit different. All right, final example for today. An alloy is made from tin and copper. If you were wondering, an alloy is just a combination of metals together. So don't worry, it's just, it's got two metals joined together. The ratio of the weight of the tin to the weight of the copper is one to four. So we've got tin to copper. So tin is the first thing and copper is the second one. And it's in the ratio of one to four. Sven used 18 grams of tin to make this particular alloy work out the weight of the alloy that he made. Okay, so we've got, um, what did we say? We said we have tin and copper in that particular order, and they're in the ratio 1 to 4. It says Sven used 18 grams of tin. So under the letter T, we write the letter, we write the number 18, and we want to find out how much copper he used. All right, so what we have to do is find out how do we get from 1 to 18, and that's times by 18. So we do the same thing on the other side, times by 18. That is going to give us 72. So the alloy that Sven made was made with 18 grams of um, tin and 72 grams of copper. Now, I said at the beginning that alloy is just a combination of more than one metal. Now, the actual question says, work out the weight of the alloy. So, all together, how much did it, did it weigh? So, if he's got 18 grams of tin and 72 grams of copper, all together, he must have 90 grams. All right, so sometimes there's an additional step at the end. Sometimes they ask us for the total. All right, that is us done with the ratios for today. So could you go ahead and do the tasks that are at the end of the PowerPoint? There is two tasks. One of them is just filling in the missing numbers, and then the other one is eight worded questions. All right, let me know if you have any problems. Um, otherwise, I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye.